This video is for solving rational equations. Now, first of all, what is a rational equation? A rational equation is an equation that contains at least one rational expression. So remember, a rational expression is when that variable is in the denominator. So a rational equation is going to be like a bunch of fractions with an equal sign, and at least one of the denominators has a variable in it. Okay? So the process that I've outlined for us on how to solve these is step one, we're going to factor all denominators and find the LCD. That should sound very familiar. We've been doing that quite a bit. Determine the LCD and state any restrictions. No problem. We're then going to move to the numerators and play the game. What the game actually creates here is an equation for us to solve. We're going to solve that equation then and then compare the answers that we have back to the restrictions to make sure that none of the solutions are restricted values from that original LCD. All right, so let's jump in and give it a try. All right, so when I'm looking here, the first thing I'm going to do is factor all denominators. So this first one is x times x minus 1. The second one here is x times x minus 1. And the third one here would be 3x times x minus 1, leading me to an LCD of 3x times x minus 1. I know from this then that x cannot equal 0 or 1. This now becomes essential. Because if when we get done solving it, if one of the answers is 0 or 1, then it's an extraneous solution. It's a solution but the solution will make the equation non-existent. All right, it'll make the denominator equal to zero. Next thing, we're going to play the game. So I start with the three. I've got three is given. What's missing? Well, if I compare each denominator to the LCD, I see I'm missing a three. Now we have an equal sign. So now I've got an equation. All right, I'm given a one. I'm missing a three. I go to the last piece, I'm given x minus 4. If I look at that denominator, I'm not missing anything. So very simply, I'm going to multiply it by 1. There's the game, what's given, what's missing. All right, clean this up. I have 9 equals 3 plus x minus 4. Uh, so that would be 9 equals x minus 1. Add 1 to both sides, and I get x is equal to 10. 10 is not restricted, and I'm pretty confident in my algebra skills, so I believe that that is the answer. All right? What I could do now is plug 10 in the original equation everywhere there's an x, and the equation should be true. All right? I'm going to trust my solving skills, so I don't need to go back and check. Let's take a look at this one. I'm going to factor the first one. This would be n minus 5 and n minus 5. The second one, n minus 5. The third one, we're back to the n minus 5 times n minus 5. All right, so looking at those three denominators, I recognize my LCD is n minus 5, but two of them, n minus 5. All right, which tells me the only restriction here is n cannot be 5. I play the game. I have 1. In the first fraction, what's missing? Nothing. So I multiply it times 1. Second fraction, minus 1. What's missing? Well, in the second one, I have an n minus 5, but I need 2 of them. So I'm missing an n minus 5. Equals. I go to the third one. I'm given n plus 3. I look at the denominator. I'm not missing anything. Multiply it by 1. All right, so now I'm in the solving phase. I have 1 minus 1n plus 5 equals 1n plus 3. Okay, uh, I'm going to combine my like terms still. I have negative 1n plus 6 is equal to 1n plus 3. I'm going to move the n's to the left, so I have negative 2n plus 6 is equal to 3. 
I'm going to subtract 3. Negative 2n is negative 3. And divide by negative 2, I get n is 3 over 2. 3 over 2 is not restricted. I'm pretty confident in that solution. So what happens if we have a rational equation, but we're missing one of the denominators? Well, it's pretty simple. It still has a denominator. The denominator is just 1. All right, so in this, I've got, let's see, in the first one, I've got a GCF of 6. So that leaves me with n plus 1. I've got a 1, and then in the third fraction, I've got a GCF of 2, and the binomial remaining would be n plus 1. My LCD would be 6 times n plus 1. This tells me I have a restriction where n cannot equal negative 1. All right? If I get an answer, and the answer is negative 1, it's not an answer. All right? It's extraneous. Play the game. I have 1 times, let's see, what am I missing in the first one? Nothing. 1 times 1. Equals 1. What am I missing? Well, I'm missing 6, and I'm missing n plus 1. So I was missing the entire LCD there. Go to the third fraction. 1. What am I missing? I'm missing what makes that 2 become a 6? i got to multiply by 3. All right, so let's clean this up. I have 1 equals 6n plus 6 plus 3, or 1 equals, combined like terms, 6n plus 9. Subtract 9, negative 8 is 6n. Divide, and I get n is negative 8 over 6, but of course I want to simplify that to n is equal to negative 4 thirds. All right, there's my solution. And one final one. All right, and just so you guys all understand, there will be a second video to uh, what happens if we end up with an equation that is quadratic. How are we going to solve that? All right, that'll be something that we'll do in a future lesson. All right, so let's see here. I've got a denominator of n plus 4. The second one factors to n plus 5 times n plus 4. And the third one factors the same way. n plus 5 and n plus 4, which tells me I have an LCD of n plus 4 and n plus 5. Okay? That tells me that I have a restriction where n cannot equal negative 4 and negative 5. All right. Play the game. Start with 1. I am missing n plus 5. And again, that was from the first fraction. Second fraction, I have minus 1. Compare its denominator to the LCD. I'm not missing anything. Multiply by 1. Go to the third fraction, 5. Look at its denominator. Compare it to the LCD. I'm not missing anything. Multiply by 1. So this gives me n plus 5 minus 1 equals 5, or n plus 4 equals 5. Subtract 4, n is 1. I hope this video helps. Let me know if you have any questions.